Each time an archer shoots an arrow, he hits the target with probability 1 over 4, or 1 quarter. Hitting or missing the target does not change the probability that he hits or misses on his next shot. The archer shoots three times. What is the probability he hits the target only once? So really this question is asking us to find the probability of one hit. One hit. And if we get just one hit, that means that we're going to get two misses because the archer shoots three times. So really we're trying to find the probability of one hit, one H, and two and two M, two misses. Now this is going to be the sort of problem where you're going to want to use a probability tree diagram because there isn't just one event associated with this condition. There are a few different ways that our archer could hit once and miss twice. For instance, we could have a, he could hit the first time and then miss the second time and miss the third time. So that's, that's going to be a probability we're going to, have to consider. He could miss the first time and then hit and then miss. So that's another probability that we're going to have to consider. And we could also have him miss the first two shots and then hit the third shot. And because these, these are all Pro, these are all outcomes that are associated with this condition. In order to find the probability that this condition occurs, we're going to sum the, the probabilities that these individual outcomes occur. So the probability that we have one hit and two misses is the probability that he hits his first shot, then misses the rest of the shots, plus the probability that he misses the first time, then hits the second time, then misses the third time, plus the probability that he misses the first two shots and hits the target on his third shot. Of course, there's no other way that he could get one hit and two, two misses, so this is quite exhaustive. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find each one of these individual probabilities, and to do that we're going to draw a probability tree diagram. And it's going to be quite a big diagram, I'm guessing, so I'm going to have to start off quite small here. So imagine that we've got this point here, and imagine we have two branches. So the first branch, I'm going to draw this branch quite wide, the, fir the first two branches uh, these denote the possibilities that he hits the first time or he misses. And we know that he hits with probability one quarter and misses with probability three quarters because one minus a quarter is three quarters. So this is the first shot. Okay, once he's taken that first shot, he has another two possibilities. He could hit his second shot and then he could miss or he could miss his second shot. So again, we've got he hits with one, one quarter probability and he misses through with the probability of three quarters. And that, hap that happens whether or not he hits or misses the, the first shot. So the second shot, whether or not he hits or misses the first shot, we're always going to have that the probability of the second shot is quarter, and three quarters for hitting and for missing. Okay, and we're also told because, you know, be because hitting or missing the target does not change the probability that he hits or misses his next shot. Also for the third shot, we could have him, imagine that he's hit the first shot, hit the second shot. What's the probability that he hits the third shot? Well, it's still just a quarter. And the probability that he misses is three quarters. So here we've got hit and miss. And we're going to have this same, this, these same branches coming out of every one of these outcomes. So we're going to have hit and miss. It's going to be a quarter and three quarters. We're going to have hit and miss, so hit, so we're going to have a quarter and three quarters, we're going to have hit and miss, one quarter, three quarters. Okay, so this, this is all the possibilities that we could have on the right here, and we can even, we can write those in a, a nicer way. Here, this outcome is associated with hitting the first shot, and then hitting the second shot, and then hitting the third shot. So this is H, H, H. That's that outcome. Here we've got hitting the first shot, hitting the second shot, then missing the third shot. So this outcome is H, H, M. Here we've got H, M, H. So hitting the first shot, missing the second shot, hitting the third shot. This is what this outcome is associated. Here we've got H, M, M, H, M, M. Here we've got missing the first shot, then hitting, then hitting. So M, H, H. M, H, H is what this one's associated with. We've got M, H, M. We've got M, M, H. And M, M, M. 
And we're particularly interested in three outcomes. We're interested in HMM, MHM, and MMH. So let's find those. HMM, HMMR. That's this one. This is HMM. So we're interested in the probability of HMM. Well, in order to find the probability, what we do is we multiply each of the probabilities that we find on each one of the branches associated with HMM. So here, the probability associated with this first hit is a quarter. So we write a quarter, then multiplied by the probability associated with a miss, given that he's hit the first time, so that's three quarters. Then we multiply that by the probability that he misses after he's hit and he's missed, which again, according to this branch, is three quarters. So if we multiply that through, we've got one times three times three is nine. Four times four is 16, times four is 64. So 9 over 64 is the probability that he hits and then misses and then misses. What about the probability that he misses, then hits, then misses? Well, miss, hit, hit, miss, hit, miss. That's this probability here. So we're interested in this outcome. So the probability that he misses and hits and misses, that's going to be associated with 3 quarters times 1 quarter times 3 quarters because those are the, the, the probabilities associated with each one of these branches. So that's going to be 3 quarters times 1 quarter times 3 quarters. And again, 3 times 1 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. What about miss, miss, hit? Miss, 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 is, miss, miss, hit is here. So the probability associated with this outcome is miss. That's got a 3 quarters pro uh, probability. Miss again, 3 quarters probability. And then hit is 1 quarter. So it's going to be 3 quarters times 3 quarters times one quarter. And you've guessed it, when we multiply that through, we get nine over 64 again. In other words, the probability of getting one hit and two misses equals the probability of a hit, a miss, and a miss, which is nine over 64, plus the probability of a miss, a hit, and a miss, which is nine over 64, plus the probability of a miss, a miss, and a hit, which is nine over 64. 9 plus 9 plus 9 is 27, and we've got a common denominator, so the probability that we're after is 9 over 64. Now you can see that if we were to consider, uh, if we were to consider, uh, say, the archer shoots 30 times or 300 times, and we would ask the question, what is the probability he, he hits the target only once? This would be an ineffective method because we'd get a, a larger and larger tree diagram probability tree diagram every time we add on another shoot and <clears throat> each time we add on another shot. So this would be an inefficient method if we had a lot of different sh shots that we had to consider, but when we've only got three, it's quite good. Uh, and it's also good in, in thinking about how to, in, in, how to envision this problem. So certainly for problems where you've got a small number of events that you need to consider. We've got a small number of stages that you need to consider. Drawing a, tea drag, uh, drawing a probability tree diagram is a good idea.